What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released the final public version of iOS 12.2 after going through six beta stages, which of course I did cover here on the channel. So of course in this video, we're gonna be going over nearly 30 new features and changes here in iOS 12.2. We're gonna talk about the performance, the battery life, and also whether or not you should update to 12.2, whether you're on iOS 12.1.4 or a previous version. All right, so as you can see here, the update came in at 2.64 gigabytes here on my iPhone 10. R. Now, of course, that size will vary depending on your device and where you are coming from. And you can see we get a very brief rundown of the new things included here in 12.2. But of course, we're going to go above and beyond everything that's listed inside of the change log. But before we do that, let's go ahead and check out the build number for this release. So settings general about. And this is where you're going to see the very first change here in iOS 12.2. And this is the new about section. It's very sectioned off now. Looks a lot better than everything just being crammed into one section. So to get to the build number we just have to click on the version and you can see there the build number is 16e227 and also in this section you will notice some new panels here as well some new information that you can get from the about section including the model name right there it now shows the model name of our phone and this is really good because before we kind of just had the model number and we would have to google the model number if we didn't know exactly what phone it is especially people that sold on ebay and things like that that was an issue we also have the limited warranty section right here that shows when your warranty expires and if you click on it it actually gives you some more information about the coverage when it comes to the warranty on your iphone which is really cool now also in this same section right here is where you'll find your status of apple care so if you have apple care on your iphone or ipad you will see a status right there that basically shows you know your coverage and when it ends and things like that so definitely a very nice overhaul to the settings general about page right here everything looks a lot better when it's sectioned off like this and you also get a lot more information inside of the about section now if we go to our settings and go to screen time and then go to downtime you'll notice that now in ios 12.2 we get the option to customize every single day when it comes to downtime for applications you can see here in past ios 12 versions we really only got downtime and then a start and an end time we weren't able Able to customize the start and end time for every single day so that's nice that we now get the customizability of doing that for every single weekday and weekend for downtime as well now if we go inside of safari and start searching something inside of the address bar obviously we always get our google search results right here but you'll notice that we now have arrows here in ios 12.2 and when you click on one of these arrows you'll notice how it auto completes and it puts everything from that arrow inside of the address bar now so you can search for that so you can click on things you just keep tapping keep tapping and then of course you can press search now obviously they don't uh, you know, search Google for you just as kind of an autocomplete thing, which is pretty nice, makes the process of searching Google a lot easier and faster. Now, another change in Safari here on iOS 12.2 is that when you go to a website without an SSL certificate, you'll see that it now shows not secure and it takes up a lot of real estate there in that address bar. Apple's really trying to let you know, you know, which sites are secure and not secure. Now, another change in iOS 12.2 comes with the color picker here. So the HTML color picker here, when you Pick like a hex color the keyboard now has a new look on ios 12.2 versus previous versions of ios and then if we head over to our safari settings inside of the settings application you'll notice we have a new toggle down here for motion and orientation access you can either enable or disable access to that data and if we head over to the apple maps application you'll notice now at the bottom where it shows the weather we also get a new section there for the air quality uh, the rating for the air quality there so if we go into our settings as well for this so if we go into maps right here you'll notice that we now have a toggle here for air quality index and then of course what would an ios update be without some updates to an emoji or me emoji so now with ios 12.2 we have new an emojis available to use so you can see here we have a shark which has grown to be my favorite an emoji here we also have a giraffe as you can see right there we also have an owl and then we have like a warthog character here as well so those are the four new an emojis here included with ios 12.2 we also have a new wallet application that shows a lot more information about things so i don't actually use apple wallet on this device this is my iphone 10r i don't use this as my daily driver so i don't have you know everything included in here but inside of the new and improved wallet application it's going to display your apple pay credit and debit transactions right below your card so you can see your recent transactions and things like that so some really handy changes to the wallet application here in 12.2 now if we go into our control center you're going to notice that we have a new image here a new icon i should say for the screen mirroring section right here so if i pull up past versions of ios 
you can see that the screen mirroring icon looked like that. But now it looks a lot more like an actual screen mirroring icon does instead of like the AirPlay icon over here. And then you'll also notice that we have a change to the Apple TV remote icon and past versions of iOS that just showed Apple TV. But now we actually have a visualization of an actual remote for the Apple TV remote and control center here. And if we actually click on that, and if we click on this one here in past versions of iOS, you can see there's a big difference here in the actual TV remote. You get a lot more options, looks a lot better, a lot cleaner here on iOS 12.2 than it did in past versions of iOS. We also get more options here as well. We have like the search right there. We have this button right here. We have choose a TV. This will also work for HomeKit TVs and things like that. So definitely some big improvements to the Apple TV remote here in iOS 12.2. And staying inside of the control center, you will also notice a new icon for AirPlay. If we look up in the top right here and the music platter, you'll notice we have a new icon. Instead of these two little bars right here, we have an actual AirPlay icon up in the top right. And what's really cool is that the icon is now dynamic and it changes based off of what kind of content you're watching, whether that be video or audio. Now, if we go back to the home screen, you'll also notice that we have a new Apple News icon right there. I'm not the biggest fan of this icon, but a lot of people do like it as well. And if we go ahead into Apple News itself, you will notice that we have a new look in here as well. The icons on the bottom are changed. We also have a new change up here where it shows the Apple icon and then says news. Looks a lot cleaner than it did in the past and I'll show you how it looked in the past right here. So you can see the difference is pretty apparent here. We don't have the news icon over on the right side and we have a much more compact, cleaner look over here on 12.2 when it comes to the top bar right there and also the bottom icons again are all changed. Now while we're on the topic of Apple News, today at Apple's keynote they did announce Apple News Plus which is going to bring a lot of new magazine subscriptions and things like that to the Apple News application which will be nice if you are into that type of thing. So now in iOS 12.2 we have a music player UI built in to Siri. So in the past, you could see when you told Siri to play something like Beats One Radio or a specific song from your library or, you know, an artist or anything like that, it would actually just take you to the application. It would start playing it in the background, but it would just say open music and it wouldn't actually have a music player built into Siri. But now with 12.2, you could see we have a nice looking window right here for that specific song. So if we head back into our settings and go up to screen time right here, you'll notice in the top right, we actually have a spinning loading wheel and it shows the last time we updated screen time and past versions of iOS it did not show the spinning wheel when it was actually collecting data and loading up the data right here it would just show the last time that it actually you know refreshed that data but now we know instead of just showing up blank or you know showing inaccurate information we now have a spinning wheel that shows when it's actually loading up data and if we go into app limits you can see on past versions of iOS you never got the toggle or the option to just temporarily disable app limits you basically just had to delete them and now in iOS 12.2, you get the option to just toggle on or off app limits because in the past, you would have to go in here and literally just delete the limit if you didn't want to use it and add it back if you wanted to use it again. But now you don't have to sit there and just delete every single limit. You can just simply turn off app limits or turn it back on when you want to. Now also in iOS 12.2 is support for the new AirPods 2, the second generation AirPods, which I will be getting here on the channel very soon. We now have full support because of course the AirPods 2 do require iOS 12.2 to work and their full potential. And then finally, we did get a modem firmware update here in iOS 12.2. Now on the 2018 iPhones, it's 1.04.30. And this modem firmware update will help when it comes to connectivity issues. So if you were having LTE connectivity issues or Wi-Fi connectivity issues, hopefully iOS 12.2 will solve that and you will be back to having good connectivity. Now, when it comes to the performance on iOS 12.2, it is simply excellent. iOS 12.2 has great performance and it really has pretty much since like beta two or three of iOS 12.2. It was noticeably smoother than iOS 12.1.3 and 12.1.4. Animations just seemed to be faster. Everything seemed to be a little bit more fluid. We didn't really have much freezing inside of the settings application like I personally did a lot on 12.1.3 and 12.1.4. And it's just overall been solid on every single device that I have tested it on. So I would definitely recommend updating to 12.2 if you are noticing some sluggish speeds and you know maybe it's not as fluid as your iPhone was in the past. But of course I will talk about you know more in depth if you should update to this or not here in a minute. Now, when it comes to the battery life of iOS 12.2, this is also excellent. I mean, battery life is terrific on 12.2. It's also noticeably better than iOS 12.1.4. And of course, the final build of iOS 12.2 hasn't been out very long, but it has been terrific even on the beta. So 
definitely recommend updating to iOS 12.2 if you're getting bad battery life as well. I go to bed with about 20 to 25% of my battery left after a full day of heavy usage on my iPhone XS Max, whereas before I would definitely be under 20% like on iOS 12.1.4, or 12.1.3, any other previous version of iOS. So I really like the battery here in 12.2. So now should you update to iOS 12.2? And I say that you should absolutely update unless you are wanting to jailbreak your device. If you're wanting to, you should stay on the lowest version possible. As of right now, I believe that's 12.1.3 or 12.1.4. So you can't jailbreak those versions just yet. So you've kind of missed the window. So, you know, if you are jailbroken right now on iOS 12 through 12.1.2, obviously you probably want to stick there. But if you're not on iOS 12 through 12.1.2, if you're stuck on like 12.1.3 or 12.1.4, you may consider updating because a jailbreak may not come out for those versions. Of course, it still could. But if you're not as interested in jailbreaking, definitely go ahead and update to 12.2. You will really like everything that comes with it. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is my full review on iOS 12.2. Went through all the changes. We talked about the battery life, the performance. We talked about whether or not you should update. So now I want to hear from you guys. What's your favorite feature here in 12.2? What do you think about the update overall? Let me know down in the comment section below. And of course, make sure you guys do subscribe so you don't miss any future iOS reviews that I do here on the channel. I do beta coverage. You know, I talk about the battery life, the performance performance, all that fun stuff here on the channel. And I always like hearing from you guys to see how it's running for you as well. So definitely subscribe so you can tune in to those future videos. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.